live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. Benny Ricciardi is here to break down the day's betting board for you. Let's go, Go! Taking a first look at the day's bets, it's time for the FTN Betting Show. Welcome to the FTN Betscast for Monday, August 15th here at FTN Bets and sponsored by our friends over at Sleeper. Sleeper is the fastest growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. And now you can win on Sleeper by playing in their new over under game too. It's super easy to play. So first in any sport, you're going to choose two or more players that you like and pick whether they're going to go over or under their listed total. So, for example, in baseball, it could be the number of hits, maybe the number of runs a guy is going to score, could be the number of strikeouts that a pitcher is going to get today. Then you're going to choose an amount of money you want to enter into the contest. And if you pick correctly, you can win anywhere from two times your money all the way up to 20 times your money if you go five out of five and get them all right. But the main reason I'm excited about this over-under game on Sleeper is that it's the only app where I can join with my buddies in their contest and we could all play together. It has a built-in group chat where I could see what you're playing, you could see what I'm playing, and we could all see what the guy who won three days in a row was playing. And it's insanely fun when everyone's following along and riding it out together, rooting for the same things to happen. So stop what you're doing now and download Sleeper to play in their new over-under game. Have some fun with your friends and make a little bit of money in the process. On your mobile phone, you can go to sleeper.com backslash FTN bets, and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. So again, Go down to the description in this podcast, sleeper.com backslash FDN bets, and you'll be eligible for up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. There are terms and conditions that apply. So see sleepers terms of use for those details. Today, we're going to keep going with our team NFL betting previews. And the team that's up today is a very tough one for me to talk about because of all the uncertainty that's floating around in the atmosphere here. And that will be the Cleveland Browns. So Let's take a look here at what we do have. Let's take a look at the numbers we actually can talk about because this is one of those teams where we don't have as many numbers as we did for some of the other teams. And I think everybody here knows why with the Deshaun Watson situation. So Cleveland was eight and nine last year. Baker Mayfield is out. Uh, There's no more Odell Beckham Jr. there. There's no more Jarvis Landry there. So they got rid of a lot of the, you know, basically passing game is, is what they got rid of last year. You brought in Deshaun Watson. They brought in Amari Cooper. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, who was there, seems to have the inside track to be stepping up to be the wide receiver two this year for this team. They do still have the backfield full of solid running backs led by Nick Chubb. Kareem Hunt's still there, although he's in the last year of his contract, making some noise, not really wanting to come to practice. Uh, Dearness Johnson, who we saw last year, is still there as well. So, I mean, there is a lot of talent still on this team. So that's the good part there. The bad part is we still don't know how many games, if any, we're going to get out of Deshaun Watson this year. So just a quick recap. Everybody out there should know, unless you live under a rock, should know what's going on right now. But obviously, Deshaun Watson had a situation in Houston. The league had stepped in to investigate that situation. They hired an independent arbiter. The independent arbiter was a woman. She went through all the details. She recommended a six-game suspension. Now, the league and the Players Association both have a right to appeal. So the Players Association was obviously fine with it. The league wants it to be longer, so they are appealing it right now. My guess is they wouldn't appeal it if they didn't think or if they didn't want to get a longer suspension out of Deshaun Watson, meaning that at a minimum, we're going to see six games. Most likely it's going to be somewhere between eight and the entire season. I have no idea where that's going to fall right now. Apparently there are negotiations going on with the lawyers. Apparently there are, you know, offers being thrown back left and right about X amount of dollars, X number of games, so on forth and so on. Really the only thing that I know is that it's causing a lot of uncertainty. It's caused a lot of uncertainty in the betting markets as well, which we'll get into here in a minute. Even now, there's only two or three sites that have a win total number up there for the Cleveland Browns. And I got to be honest, depending on how this works out, I could really like this to the over or the under, depending on how many games he gets. So let's get into that first. So Jeff Radcliffe, when he did his win total projections, it was before the information came out about the initial six game suspension for Deshaun Watson. Jeff used basically what a lot of people have been using is that Watson was going to be suspended half the season and play half the season. So he had him suspended for eight or nine games and he had him playing eight or nine games to get to an 8.8 win total projection for the Cleveland Browns this year. 
So again, if it came in as under six, which it did, well, people started betting the over on that eight and a half number that was out there in the market because people said, well, hey, if he's going to get less this, but less games than we thought, and we're already projecting them close to nine, if he plays an extra game or two, that gives them an extra you know, bump in the win percentage in both those games, that number probably gets up above nine. So to see a number of eight and a half, which is the consensus number in the market, the over was the way to go when you saw that Deshaun Watson only had six games. Now we're thinking Deshaun Watson could end up 12, 15, maybe even the whole 17 game season with a suspension. If he's suspended by 17 games, now I like the under because now you're taking half of those games that Watson was supposed to be the quarterback and you're subbing in Jacoby Brissett, who is a little bit of a lesser quarterback than, you know, Deshaun Watson is here. That probably translates into, uh, you know, another loss to two losses, somewhere in between one to two more losses, which now puts them down below eight wins there. So, this is really the thing that we have to look at here. If you think Watson's going to get off without any additional, you know, charges, which I don't, or I shouldn't say charges. That's, that's the wrong thing to say. If he's going to get off without any additional games on his suspension, which I don't, then the way to go would be to bet the over. But if you think like I do that Watson's about to get probably double, if not the entire season as his suspension, then you got to look at the downside of this number because now the projection should actually be a little bit lower. And again, this is why this is so hard. It's not that Jeff did anything wrong here. It's that when you have uncertainty out there, you, you could say, hey, you know, if this guy, I mean, listen, you could do this with any team, right? If Dak Prescott gets hurt, you're not getting 11, 12 wins out of the Dallas Cowboys this year. It's just not going to happen. If Patrick Mahomes goes down, you're probably not getting double digit wins out of the Kansas City Chiefs this year. It's just not going to happen. So this is not something that is Cleveland Brown specific. This is every team in the league, basically. You know, your starting quarterback is your starting quarterback because he's better than your backup quarterback. Therefore, if your backup quarterback has to play 17 games instead of your starting quarterback, it stands to reason that you're going to win less of those 17 games. Like, none of this is rocket science here. But again, until we actually know, right now we're just kind of rolling the dice and figuring, well, maybe he's going to get this many games or maybe he's going to get that many games. It's very tough to kind of figure out exactly what the numbers should be here for the Cleveland Browns. And that's the reason why, like I said, most of the books have already taken this down. The eight and a half win total for the Cleveland Browns so far is only available on FanDuel, PointsBet, and BetMGM. And the other thing that's crazy about it, just so everybody out there knows, they, are, they all have the number at eight and a half, but the payouts are drastically different. On FanDuel, over eight and a half wins is, playing, is paying plus 125. On bet MGM over eight and a half wins is paying plus 110 on points bet over eight and a half wins is paying even money. So just with those three right there, you have 25 basis points between the low and the high. And that's only with three books. Like I said, there's only three books that still have this listed right now. Fandle points, bet MGM, everybody else has it taken down and is waiting to get more information on the news, even to the downside, right? If you want to play the under eight and a half, which I think is the way to play it. You have to go over to points bet and play that at minus 110 because the other sites have it at like minus 130, minus 125, minus 140. So to get it at minus 110 on points bet, I think is a really, really good bet here. Like I said, I am totally expecting Deshaun Watson to end up with somewhere between a 12 to full season uh, suspension by the time this is all said and done. Six games, I think, is way too few for the league. And the fact that the league is pushing this so hard means they're going to wind up getting their way. So I expect Deshaun Watson to be suspended, you know, like I said, at least double digit games here, maybe even the whole season. And that would mean that the under is the way I want to play this. So under eight and a half wins, minus 110 on points bet, my favorite place to play the Cleveland Browns. Will the Cleveland Browns make the playoffs? Uh, yes, is paying plus 165 right now. No, is paying minus 200. Points bet is the only book that still has, will they make the playoffs up? Normally, we get five or six of the books that we work with. You know, DraftKings usually has these. Fandles usually has these. Uh, Caesars, MGM. You know, five or six of the books we work with usually have these numbers up. Right now, points bet, the only one that has a number on will the Cleveland Browns make the playoffs. I like the no, obviously. Minus 200 on the no there. Again, if they're being projected, though, for eight and a half, nine wins. We talk about this all the time, right? Ten wins guaranteed you a playoff spot last year. Nine wins, about half the teams that had nine wins got in. Half the teams that had nine wins didn't get in. So nine wins is really the number you have to get to if you want to have a chance to make the playoffs. Ten wins last year guaranteed you getting in. We'll have to see how that holds. We really have only had one season of 17 games, so I can't tell you that that's a long-term trend. But for now, I would be shooting for 10 wins if I wanted to make the playoffs. And I don't know. I just don't see Cleveland getting there. No, minus 200. Probably a little too rich at that number, but I do think that is the way that it goes. 
So let's go on and talk about their chance to raise some trophies this year. Let's go to the NFC North first. Uh, they are the third team in the NFC North. So the first team is the Baltimore Ravens, have the shortest price, like 160, 170. Um, then you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, anywhere between 170 to plus 200 is the high you can get on them. And then you go over to the Cleveland Browns, plus 275, all the way up to a high of plus 325 is the best number you can get there. But here's what I wanted to talk about with this number, right? So before the Deshaun Watson suspension news came out, this number was actually like 340, 350. Uh, then the Deshaun Watson news came out where he only got a six-game suspension. And this number dropped from 350, 340, all the way down to like plus 175. So at plus 175, that was a 36% chance that they were giving them to win this conference. That's pretty good. You know, four teams in the conference, you have a 36% chance. You know, it's more than average says you should. So that wasn't a bad situation there. Then the NFL came in and announced that they are going to relook at this whole suspension situation. And the number shot back up to plus 325, which is a 23% chance. So the fact that the Sean Watson might get suspended for a couple more games here made the implied probability of the chances of the Cleveland Browns winning the, you know, AFC North go from 36% down to 23%, about a 13% change in the number right there. And that's assuming that Watson does come back this year at some point too. If he does end up getting a full season suspension, I think that number does creep back up into the plus 350, plus 375 range, you know, maybe even up to plus 400, where it would be like a 20% implied probability. But I just wanted to say that now that it was interesting to see how this number has moved along with, you know, the news and the news that has come out there. Every time we got new news, obviously we had to take a look. So the next number we can take a look at is the Cleveland Browns to win the entire AFC. And that number is sitting at plus 1700 points. Bet has the best number there. There's a lot of them at plus 15 plus 16 as well. Uh, Caesars plus 1300 13 to one is the lowest number there for the Cleveland Browns to win the NFC. But if you're going to bet, I'm the win the NFC to win the AFC. But if you're going to bet on the Cleveland Browns to win the AFC, you want to do it over at points bet. Points bet has it at 17 to one. Remember, you can get over to ftnbets.com backslash sportsbooks. You go over to that ftnbets.com backslash sportsbook page, sportsbooks page with an S, sorry. You're going to see the best sportsbook offers for all of the sportsbook partners that we work with right now. Some of them are offering a $250 deposit match bonus. Some of them are offering a $1,000 uh, first bet, you know, no sweat first bet where if you lose, they give you a voucher in the same amount of money as whatever it was that first bet that you lost there. So there are quite a few different offers that are out there in the market. And the offers out there now are the best offers of the season because they're always the best offers of the season around football because that's when they get the most of their new people. So if there's any of these books that we mentioned here that you don't have an account with, get over to that ftnbets.com backslash sportsbooks page. Take advantage of the free money that's being offered, whether it's a free bet or a deposit bonus, or however they're paying it out for you, because it's always better to get free money than not get free money. There's no sense making a bet on a site that's not going to give you anything extra for it when you still have the availability to go and open an account on one of these other sites and get, you know, double your money or, or a, a, you know, a, a cushion that if you lose the bet, you get a, a voucher back in the same amount to try to win your money back. It's always better to take advantage of all that stuff. So take advantage of it now as you're trying to build your bankroll so that you have your bank world ready to fire at the beginning of the NFL season. So let's see. The last number we can talk about here is the Super Bowl number for the Cleveland Browns. 30 to 1 plus 3,000 is the Super Bowl number. DraftKings, PointsBet, Sugarhouse, Bet Rivers, Unibet all have it at that plus 3,000, 30 to 1 number. 3.2% chance is what the Cleveland Browns are getting to win the Super Bowl this year. And I understand that if they can stay above 500 before they get the Sean Watson back. And if Watson can be back for at least half the season here, or maybe six or eight, the final six or eight games, shake off some cobwebs. You know, this team does have a good defense. They do have a very good running game that they can rely on. And then if you add the fact that having a Watson in there, a good winning quarterback who can run or pass and, and keep drives alive for you. And this could be a very dangerous team. I would not want to play in the playoffs, but Again, we got to see how all that works out before we can really get into it. Do I like it at 30 to one? No, I probably still wouldn't bet them. If they were 40 or 50 to one, though, I do think they would have been worth the wager. 30 to one, I think is fair value. I don't think they're overvalued, but I don't think they're undervalued either. And we like to bet on things where we have a little bit of a cushion. I don't really think there's much of a cushion here. I think 30 to one is probably the right number. 
So there you go. That's going to wrap it up for the team portion of this. We're going to talk about some of the individual players here, but I got to be honest with you guys. There is not a lot to talk about. A lot of the numbers that were up, first off, a lot of these numbers weren't even up, have never been posted on some of the smaller books, but even some of the bigger books who did post these numbers after the Watson news have taken a lot of these numbers down right now. So what you'll see is they still have a lot of these guys listed for like, you know, to win the rushing title or to win the, you know, to have the most receiving yards in the NFL, to have the most receiving touchdowns in the NFL, things like that are still up there on the market. But what they have taken down is, you know, the number of catches the guy projects for this year, because that number is probably drastically different if it's the Sean Watson, at quarterback for eight or 12 games versus if Jacoby Brissett is the quarterback for, I don't know, 12 to 17 games, right? So those numbers are no longer up there in the market, which makes it a little tough for us to talk about some of these player props because, you know, there's not really a lot of things that we can talk about that we would want to bet on because there's not a lot of guys on the Cleveland Browns offense that I expect to lead the league in many categories. Like, do you expect any of these guys to lead the league in most receptions? Do you expect them to lead the league in, you know, like is Amari Cooper going to lead the league in touchdown catches? Is, uh, you know, David Njoku going to lead the league, not for tight ends, the entire league in receiving yards. Like, I, I just don't see how any of these things are going to be winners, but we'll talk about them here. You know, start with the quarterback like we normally do. Deshaun Watson, Jacoby Brissett, you know, neither one of them have up any yardage totals or touchdown totals or interception totals, because again, we don't know how many games either one of these guys are going to play. You know, would I take the over on like, Jacoby Brissett interceptions if he was going to play all 17 games and Watson wasn't in there maybe you know that would be something I would look at there but most likely they're just going to run the ball as much as they can a lot like the Indianapolis Colts did a couple of years ago when they had to put in Jacoby Brissett their backup quarterback and kind of let him run with it so I'm expecting to see a big dose of a guy like Nick Chubb here this year so let's talk about Nick Chubb because that's a guy that we actually can talk about you know plus 1100 to be the guy with the most rushing yards in the NFL the low on this number is plus 850 over at Caesars. I don't think plus 1100 is crazy because, like I said, if it's Jacoby Brissett under center as their quarterback for the whole year and a guy like Kareem Hunt who's threatening to sit out now because he wants a new contract, I mean, there's a there's a, a, a very real possibility that Cleveland decides to just feed Nick Chubb as much as they can this year and just kind of ride him. So, you know, most rushing yards for him, I don't, I don't really hate that number. I think plus 1100, 11 to 1. Not a bad number if you want to go take it over there. Nick Chubb does have some actual props we can talk about here. 1,150 rushing yards is his number. The over is paying minus 112 on FanDuel. I like that number. Like I said, I think they're going to have to lean on him. And I think they're going to have to lean on him more now that they have the news that, you know, Deshaun Watson is probably going to get suspended for most of the season. I think this is going to be a big season for Nick Chubb. I know, you know, they have some other guys in there, but Dearness Johnson isn't going to play unless Nick Chubb gets hurt. Kareem Hunt will still get some of his stuff, but a lot of Kareem Hunt stuff comes in the passing game with Nick Chubb handling a lot of the running stuff. The fact that they're still projected to win eight or nine games here, even if they don't have Deshaun Watson for most of the season, means that they're going to have some of those games where they're up and Chubb's going to get that 25, 30 carries that, you know, would give him those big uh, 150, 175 yard kind of rushing games. So you had a couple of those in there and you can get up to 1150 really quick. Chubb's going to have to stay healthy, but that's the same thing we say about everybody who we're betting it over on, right? But I like Nick Chubb over 1,150 yards. If you guys happen to be on the other side of that bet, 1,200 yards is the number that DraftKings has, so you could play the under over on DraftKings. 1,200.5 yards is what they have it at, and it's paying minus 115 for the under there, so that would be the best place to bet against Nick Chubb if you don't like what I'm saying. Nick Chubb also has a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a change with the touchdown numbers. I actually like the yardage number more than I like the touchdown number for him because one of the things that the quarterback play affects, in my opinion, is being able to keep drives alive and getting into the end zone. So if Jacoby Brissett is the quarterback, I don't really want to mess with that as much as I want to mess with the yards. I just think the yards are a little bit safer. But I'll give you the numbers on it anyway. FanDuel has this at over under eight and a half touchdowns. So the over is minus 122 at eight and a half touchdowns. If you're going to play the over, that would be the place to play it. I don't like that it's juiced up to minus 122, but I do like that it is two full touchdowns below the other number that's being offered in the market over at DraftKings and BetMGM. DraftKings and BetMGM have this number at 10 and a half. The over is minus 105. 
I would rather play the over eight and a half at minus 122 on Fandle. Yes, you're giving up 17 basis points, but it's two less touchdowns. You know, if it was one less touchdown, if this was nine and a half, or if the number at Fandle was nine and a half instead of eight and a half, then yeah, it probably makes more sense. But two touchdowns for only 17 basis points, that doesn't make sense. So over eight and a half on Fandle at minus 122 is still the place I would play the over here. But if you're going to play the under on it, that's where you want to go to DraftKings or BetMGM. Ten and a half number, that's two touchdowns higher. That's a little bit higher than a projection that we have. Under is minus 125. So, yes, they're even saying it's more than like, you know, it's not a 60%. It's probably like a 40, 55% chance that this number is going to go under here. And I think I would kind of agree with that. I think 10 and a half is a lot of touchdowns to, to project. And again, I don't know how explosive this offense is going to be without the Sean Watson. Maybe they get more red zone opportunities with Watson. You know, with Brissette, maybe they lean on the run a little more, but I don't think they're going to score as much or have as many opportunities. So, you know, it's kind of like a catch-22 there. And that's why I said I'd rather just mess with the yards, trying to stay away from something that's a little more variable like the touchdown here. All right, so what else can we talk about here? Not much else that we can talk about here with the Cleveland Browns. I mean, Amari Cooper, they took down his catches. They took down his yardage prop. They took down his touchdown prop numbers. The only thing still available for Amari Cooper now are, will Amari Cooper lead the NFL in catches? Uh, 66 to 1 over on Ben MGM. I, I don't really like that. If Jacoby Brissett's going to be the quarterback, I think they're going to throw less, even though I think Amari Cooper is clearly the number one and is likely to lead the team in targets, probably catches, probably yards, probably receiving touchdowns. You know, I don't think he leads the NFL in those categories. I don't think he's an elite, elite guy. And I don't think this is an elite offense that's going to give him an opportunity to do that. So, again, can't really bet on most catches there. Same thing with most touchdowns in the NFL. I mean, again, could Amari Cooper lead the NFL in touchdowns? I mean, I guess he could, but I, I don't think it's very likely. And since that's the only thing to bet on, I think people are going to be going and making stupid bets on most catches or most touchdowns for some of these uh, Cleveland guys. For me, I think you just avoid it. Uh, Donovan People jones probably likely to be the number two wide receiver on this team. Most catches, 150 to one. I do not see him being the guy with the most catches in the NFL. Uh, most touchdowns, 100 to one, probably more likely, but still do not see him being the guy who ends up with the most touchdowns in the NFL. So we really can't bet on either one of those numbers. Uh, David Njoku, most receiving yards. Most receiving yards is not just for tight end. This is the entire NFL. 150 to one uh, plus 15,000. Again, don't see him having the most receiving yards in the entire league. Most receiving touchdowns, 80 to one. Again, not something that I see. So I know this is a little bit of a boring podcast here. We go team by team. You can check out all the other teams that are out there. But right now, the way things are with the Cleveland Browns, I mean, these are the numbers, right? And that's all I'm trying to do here is let you guys know where the numbers are. If you want to bet them and give you a little bit of my insight on why I think something might be a good bet and why I think something is something we avoid. At the moment, until we get those actual numbers for some of the Browns guys, until we get the actual number on a game suspension for uh, Deshaun Watson, the only thing I can say right now is um, no, I don't like the Cleveland Browns to make the playoffs. I do like the under eight and a half wins at minus 110 on points bet. And I do like Nick Chubb to go over 1,150 yards at minus 112 on Fandel. That's about it when it comes to the Cleveland Browns, though, guys. Those are the only three things I think are even worthy of a wager or for you guys digging a little bit deeper into. And with that, we're going to wrap up this edition, FTN Betscast. Live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. 